Okay, Matthew 21. Matthew 21. And when they drew nigh to Jerusalem, to come to Jerusalem, they were come to Beth Page. Now it's interesting that Beth Page means Beth is house. Page is figs. The house of figs. Well, it was Adam and Eve who took fig leaves and sold them together. They made their egg for him. It is Jesus that gave a couple parables about the fig tree. He said, when a fig tree gets its leaves and all that, you know the time is near. So he approaches a city, house of figs. He's coming to his time. Onto the mountain of olives. Then sent Jesus two disciples. And he doesn't name who. Saying unto them. Go into the village over against you, which is near you. So, the, so here they are in Bethpage. There's a village near them. Go over. Here would be Daytona Beach. If you know Daytona Beach, would be, you know, uh, South Daytona. Uh, I'm trying to think of the one over here. Um, Holly Hill. Those are right next to us. And straightway ye shall find an ass tied. All modern Bibles will say, find a donkey tied. You say, what's the difference? The difference is, donkey, the word, did not show up in the dictionaries, did not show up in the human language until about 1775 to 1785. The word ass was before 1611. But we don't want to use the word ass but I wonder what their language is while they're at home. Because ass is too nasty. I remember they would pick on Dr. Ruckman. He'd always say jackass. Well, it's a lot better than what comes out of the mouth of some people. So ass and donkey, and you can go to my website. I've done a whole PowerPoint. It's the same thing. But, you know, we're, we're, we just, we want to clean things up by perverting the scripture. I mean, had it not been 1775 to 1785, they would have to say ass. And a cult that would be the, the, the baby with her. Loose them. Untimed. They're tied. Now, Jesus is setting forth prophecy here. And I'm not talking about Zechariah yet or Isaiah. I'm talking about prophecy. Is Here he is with two disciples. Here's the plan set. Here is the noun. Here is the verb. This is what you're going to find. And you're going to find it to the fine tip of a pin. Without error. And bring them to me. So he brings both. I want both of them. If any man say aught unto you, I believe John goes, in, the Lord has need of him. The Lord, capital L, have need of him. Did, did Jesus ever call himself God? There he is. And straightway he will send thee, and would probably be the owner. All this was done <clears throat> that it might fulfill which was spoken by the prophet, which would be Isaiah and Zechariah, saying, now, here we go. Here's another key verse of Matthew. Tell ye the daughter of Zion. The Old Testament is spelt with a Z. New Testament's with an S. That's Jewish. That's not church. When you see, and there are a lot of color churches, you know, the Zion, Mount Zion. That's not Gentile. That's not the Christian church. That is Jewish. Remember what Jesus said? Oh, let me see. This one I can go with my Bible. Let me see this real quick. I don't want to lose my place. Ooh, in Revelation in one of the churches. Because when you say Zion, that's specific to Israel. So... Okay, there's false, false apostles. 
All right. In uh, Revelation 2, 8. Unto the angel of the church of Samaria, right. These things say at the first and the last, which is which was dead and is alive. Amen. I know thy works, tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. But are a synagogue of Satan. So when you adapt in your church, in your religion, Zion, that's not your name for a church. And there are plenty of people out there who claim to be Jews and they're not. Sammy Davis Jr. was one of them. There are people from Africa who proclaim to be Jews. No, you're not. You must be a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you have Jewish blood in you, you are a half-breed, you would be considered like a Samaritan. Now watch. Jewish Zion, Zion, Zion in the Old Testament, Zion in the New Testament. Behold, thy king, capital K, cometh unto thee. That's Jesus speaking. Thy king. It's me. I'm the king, Jesus is saying. Of the Jews, Zion. So if you name your, your, your Christian church today, Zion, the king, thy king, you would run back and say, Jesus is the king of the church, and you have lied. Nowhere is he the king of the church. Actually, there's one place where he, he would be the king of the church. It's in the millennium, when we are made, some of us are made to be kings in the millennium. And we will be under the king, king of Jesus. Because that's important, because that king is going to be put on a, on a post, on a sign, by a Gentile named Pilate. He's going to write above the head of Jesus, king of the Jews. Israel doesn't believe it. But the Gentile... And by the time we come to the end of Matthew, you're going to start seeing, all right, we are now going into the Gentiles. And when we go into the book of Acts, it's Jewish, but then it starts getting to Gentiles. Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 10, and then it goes more and more and more to the Gentiles and less of the Jews. But Matthew, Zion, keep saying it, Jewish, king, they go together. Matthew is about the king, genealogy of a king. Matthew chapter 1. Not the church. Cometh unto thee, meek, sitting upon an ass, and a colt of the foal of an ass. You say, well, how oh, is he writing both? Yes, he is. Well, how can he do that? Does it say the first, uh, does it say at the same time? You see, Bible correctors, Bible haters will say, oh, upon an ass and a coal. It does not say both. Now, if I were to say, uh, I'm, I'm going somewhere, and I took a Ford and I took a Chevy. Well, somewhere along the line, I parked the Ford and got in the Chevy. You know, I, I'm... I'm I'm taking a trip, and we're going somewhere, and I'm renting a car. I drove my car, and I picked up their Plymouth. I didn't have both. And a lot of times they have a problem with that and. Titus 2.13. Our great God and Jesus Christ. Well, the Jehovah Witnesses say, well, there's God, and here's Jesus. No, 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 no. And that's the, Je I think it's the Jehovah, something like that. And you don't need to really know, but that's the Jehovah comma. You know, some religions say, all right, here's A and then here's B, but it's actually one. You got to be careful. So verse, two, verse five, if you want to be a critic of the Bible, you would say, oh, how can he ride too? He don't. And I think, I don't know much about horses. Only. I think they would tell you, you know, it would give an animal a break. There are some Euro European countries now, they pass a law. You cannot be over a certain amount of weight to ride their asses. 
Because if you're too heavy, <laughs> excuse the expression, you're going to break their ass. And I would assume if you go so far, you may have to change. Ch I mean, let's say you take a trip to the, to the Grand Canyon. People ride an ass or mule down the canyon. They might give you another one coming back. Not the same one. I don't know. I'm just trying to explain what, what the world hates Jesus in the Bible. There's no explaining. He rode both, but not the same time. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And brought the ass and the colt and put them put on them their clothes. So there's no saddle. One of the other uh, gospels will tell them that has never been broke, has never been ridden. You're not going to, well, hopefully, Lord willing. I think with the future right now, if I'm able to keep going with the messages, they say that one of, one of the gospels will say it has never been ridden. Now, I have been told by many, many, many people in my lifetime, you don't jump on a, on a donkey and ride away. You jump on a donkey has never been ridden, and you're on the floor, you're on the ground picking yourself up. Or I have been told by one man who knew horses, you can do whatever you want. You can get on that ass. He ain't moving, and then you get off him. He starts moving. You would the proper expression is stubborn as an ass. That's what the animal is. So the saddle that Jesus had was close. He doesn't even get a saddle. And they set him upon their oaths. And a very great multitude. Notice how many times Matthew said a great multitude. A multitude of people. Now you're going to ask your question. When he's on Calvary, where are they? Can I tell you? You get a parable of the parable son. Of the, the, the prodigal son. The parable son. And you're some of your friends, some of your family, and Proverbs points to this too. They will use you to, you have nothing to be used anymore. That prodigal said, oh, we had money to spend. Oh, hey, hey uh, let's go to the bar. Hey, why don't you buy us drinks? Why don't you take us to, I don't know if they had McDonald's or anything back then, probably didn't, but, you know, go, go, go buy me a, a camel burger or something. And then once his money was gone, so were the friends. The, the Proverbs will say, the rich is loved, but the poor is hated. And when Jesus is on the cross, he's given us the most important gift ever. His blood, salvation. And none of the multitude is there. Oh, they're there for eyes to see, ears to hear, fingers to move, hands to move, devils to be removed. Oh, they're there for that. But when it comes to salvation... They ain't there. Did you get that? You might open up a soup kitchen. You're going to have a lot of people in that church. They ain't going to hear the message. You might get a Baptist hospital. Oh, you may get a lot of people in the mercy room. You might get a lot of people, but not many are going to turn to Jesus. I mean, soup kitchens are good, but... I worked in one soup kitchen for a while, and it's, I don't know. People do get saved. Not all. We talked about that last night. So the very great multitude spread their garments in the way. And this is, here comes royalty. Here comes the king. Others cut down branches from trees. Do you know somewhere else in the Bible where they cut down branches from trees? On Jesus' birthday. And I ain't talking about evergreen tree. These trees were not put into the house, Jeremiah chapter 10. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. You can burn at the, at the junkyard. <laughs> Oh, your curly bulbs and all that. When you drop dead, they'll still be there. <laughs> but they cut down branches of the tree. That is the feast of the table of the feast of the tabernacles. 
Now, we're not in the, the, the time of the Feast of the Tabernacles, but what they would do is they would cut down every branch, everything they could get, and they would make booths. That pictures God entombed in a body. When God became a baby, Feast of Tabernacles, not Tammuz Day. So you have Jesus on his way to the cross to die, and the Jews lay out what they did for the Feast of Tabernacles and straw them in the way. So they call it Palm Sunday. And I think I think another gospel does say palms is palms, but don't get the Catholic Church out of the Baptist Church, please. Okay? I spent, I wouldn't say in the church, in and out of the Catholic Church 18 years. On April 25th, 1987, I came out of the Catholic Church. I came to Jesus Christ. I believed on him. He became my Savior. I have failed him over and over and over and over. And every time I confess my sins with my heart, God cleanses me. God forgives me. And I walk into a Baptist church and I see Catholic practices that I have come to call the Catholic, I call the Baptist church the Catholic Baptist or the Baptist Catholic. I came out of that mess to come back into it when I'm down here in Florida. Because I'll tell you why. These pastors, they live in an isolated greenhouse. They don't know what religion is. I know one pastor said, every time you pass by a church, pray for it. Boom! Because that Catholic church killed my brothers and sisters in history. Don't you dare pray for them. That Catholic church, we went there, we passed out uh, gospel tracts on Tammuz Day, and they took them from the people's hands and threw them in the garbage can. Whoa! You pray for that church, you are an enemy of the church. You don't know church history. And you're going to stand before God at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. Shame, shame if a pastor doesn't know what the church down his street knows and practices. Shame on you. Uh, we're going to go to the Holy Land and we're going to have Catholics and Arabians show us all the places that Jesus wasn't. Well, here's the place in Jerusalem where Jesus was killed. Hebrew says outside the gate. You don't like what I'm saying? Tough doo-doo. Because I'm right, you're wrong, Jesus will prove it. He's yelling at me. And the multitudes, multitudes, multitudes. You notice how Matthew keeps saying multitude, but they're not going to be there at the cross. It's a show. You know why they're there now? Because here comes the king. Right? Here he comes. They believe he's the king. Look, they're, they're, they're throwing the, the, the trees and their clothes in front of him as he's coming in on a royal Jewish king limousine. Jesus is not driving the presidential beast that Donald Trump had. Jesus is not driving around in a black armored limo for the president. Jesus is not driving on an armor-piercing white vehicle for the dummy pope. I read today that Pope that that, that Pope mobile it, 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 it's like the presidential. No one can shoot at it. it. It's protected from missiles and bombs and everything like that. It has all the luxuries like the president uh, for the Pope. And my comment on on that Facebook post, which was love, I guess he doesn't believe in God. Now, if you go back in the Old Testament, do a search. David, the king, rode on a donkey. That is that ass. That donkey is the pres. Or the pres. It's the king limousine of the Old Testament. That's why he's riding an ass. The Arabians have horses. The Egyptians have horses. 
Jesus is not Egyptian and Jesus is not Arabian. He's Jewish. He comes in on an ass. That's why. You'll find that in the Old Testament with David. And follow, oh yeah, why they're doing this? Because he's the king. You know what they want him to do right now? They don't want him to go to the cross. They want him to call upon the angels and call upon the weapons of war. He wants to call upon rocks, Old Testament. He wants to call upon the, 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 the defense of Israel. They want him to destroy Rome and sit in Jerusalem and be their king. That's not what that's not what the Bible says. The king comes after the suffering. The king, the lion, comes after the lamb is slain. They don't want Calvary. Matter of fact, a lot of them, including the disciples. But you, what are the disciples doing when Jesus died? They're in the upper room crying. Why? It's all done. Where's the, the, the men in the road that he named it. It's all done. It's finished. We thought he was the one. He was the great prophet and all that. Now it's over with. He's dead. That's what they were thinking. That when Jesus died on Calvary, there's Pilate. He's supposed to be conquered. We're still got Herod's money. We're supposed to have the Jewish money. And when he's standing there bloody and, and, and his body's been ripping open by the, by the cat of nine tails and he's got spit dripping off his face and, and partial of his, his beard has been pulled off. And he's wearing the thorn. Israel looks at him like, huh, what a loser you are. He came onto his own and his own received him not. Why? Because he didn't conquer Rome. He's going to conquer Rome at, at the end of the tribulation. Not now. You see, when you tell a Jew, and I've had Jews tell me this, Isaiah 50, well, explain to me about Isaiah 53. Well, that's us, the nation of Israel, and you Gentiles. That's the Messiah. No, that's not the Messiah. Everything in Isaiah 53 is about Jesus. No, no, it's us. It's what you've done to us. Now, I've had three Jews tell me that. So, saying, Hosanna. Hosanna, you see the Anna, that's grace. But it has a whole new meaning as Hosanna, and we'll tell you why they're all there. He's saying, Lord or God, help us. Lord, God, help us now. Save us now. And when he ends up bleeding and, and suffering, and agony and pain and body torn up before Pilate. Well, how is he going to save us? Crucify him. It's just sad to say, but that's what it's about. Now look at this. Son of David. That's what the blind men said. Son of David. This is a Jewish book of a king. Run back. We won't do it, but you run back. Put on your own thing. You run back to Matthew chapter 1. You'll see Son of David. They're all kings. Except uh, Ruth and uh, uh, Bathsheba, which is not mentioned by name. Come on, king. Come on, Jewish king. Come on, son of David. Come. David was big. He took the dragon. I mean, the, he took the giant down. Come on. Take this nation down. Save us now. From what? Not salvation going to hell. Save us from Rome. Blesses he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Victory, Jehovah God. And then they're looking back to the Old Testament, looking at all the victories, except one, all the victories of Joshua. Jehovah saves. They're looking at Joshua. All right, we're beginning the nation all over again. We're going to come in and we're going to be like Joshua. We're going to be with Jesus. We're going to conquer everybody. That's not what Jesus is near now for. He's the lamb. He's not the lion. 
Hosanna in the highest, save us, save us. Those two blind men cried out, Son of David, have mercy on us. Son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd saying, Hosanna, Son of David, Hosanna, Son of David. I wonder what part those blind men had to have the crowd to be shouting what they're shouting out. Because when we left off with the blind men in Matthew 20, it says they followed Jesus. And they could not but help to say, I can see because of Jesus. I can see because of Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. Look what Jesus done for me. That's what the blind man did when, when he was in the temple. I don't know who the man is, but I know one thing. He opened my eye. I am blind, but now I see. He couldn't but shut up. He ended up getting kicked out of the, the, the temple. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? <laughs> Jerusalem, the heavenly capital of Israel. The, 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 the place where God said, where I will put my name to Moses writing. In the place where I put my name, Jerusalem. And their response is, as he's coming to Calvary, knowing Isaiah 53, who is this guy? If there's anybody who would know or should have known, would be the ones in Jerusalem. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, and scribes. And maybe some of the, the Gentiles are there, but who is this? So another Catholic miss is he did not have a yellow or white halo around his head because he was like, hey, look, his head's lit. It's got to be Jesus. <laughs> Jesus looked like not what you see the pictures are painted and, and, and the pictures on Facebook. He didn't look Italian. He looked Jewish. That the fact is, here he is in a whole multitude of Jews, a couple of Gentiles, and a whole multitude of Jews. He's riding on an ass, and they look at him like, well, who the heck is this guy? What do you mean? There's no beauty that we should desire him. He looked like any any other Jew. He had a big nose, black hair. He was some, he was short, probably very muscular. I mean, you don't go trotting up a mountain, up and down a mountain. Poor Moses was over 80 years old. He's going up and down the mountain, up and down the mountain, up and down that mountain. I don't think God had an oxygen mask for him. You know, if Jesus were to walk into your church, and he's not going to do it, but if he were to walk into the Laodicean church today, he would say, well, who's that guy? Was Jesus? Oh no, he's got blonde hair. He's beautiful. He's wearing a robe. He's got the sandals on his feet. And no, it's the Baptist, Catholic, Catholic, Baptist. You choose A or B. You know, you know what the Bible says about the angels? You can entertain an angel and not even know what you do. What you do it? Now I know angels are males. I know that. I believe that with all my heart. Maybe I shouldn't say it, but there have been some females that come in my life, and I, I look at it after it's like, I can't because angels are males. So, you can't even recognize an angel. They didn't even recognize Jesus right there, flesh and blood. I read Martin Luther, I think it was one time. He's, he's, he's in his bed, and he. he Proclaimed to see Jesus. And he says, I'm Jesus. He took his inkwell and threw it at him. <laughs> they say, they say, they used to, I don't know what the bill is saying, but if you go to his where he lived, you would find the, the, the ink on the wall. <laughs> You're not going to see Jesus today. If you do, he's going to be in the sky above the clouds. And <laughs> sorry, you Gentiles, sorry, you, you Jews who have not believed on Jesus, you're left behind. 
I think for many Christians, even myself, when we look upon Jesus, we're not going to believe it. The only way the identification of the mark of Jesus today is the nail prints in his hands and his feet and the spears in his heart. So the whole, the whole capital of Israel, Jerusalem, who is he? Isn't that remarkable? He's been in the land every year, three times a year, from an infant. Because he was in, he, at the Feast of Tabernacles eight days after that, the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, Mary and his adopted father Joseph brought him to the temple. He was circumcised, and oh shoot, wasn't even the priest. Yeah, he was there. And Anna. That's the eighth day. He circumcised him eighth day, the covenant of Abraham. There's only one celebration of the feast that has eight days. That's the Feast of Tabernacles. Jesus was circumcised the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles, where they grabbed trees and branches and leaves and made them booths. Verse 8. You know what 8 is in your Bible? It's a new beginning. 9 is the fruits of the Spirit. 10 is Gentile. 12, which we're not going to do tonight, is Jewish. And he goes in the temple of God. Who is this? This is remarkable. Because you're glad to see in church age, most come as you are, all are welcome. If Jesus were to show up through the doors, many of them would say, who is that? Who is that? He's not going to. And there have been people who proclaim. Uh, you want you want an interesting thing while we're on this? Go and search how many people have proclaimed to be Jesus, and open up the Wikipedia link for that, and you won't believe how long that Wikipedia and it gives names and countries, and gives a little brief thing about the people, you know, like David Koresh and all that, who profess to be Jesus. And Jesus said, many shall come in my name. I know I'm going off the wall here. But we're talking about who is this? They don't even know. How many people have fallen for many? I do it. Wikipedia. How many people have fallen for a false Jesus? Think, well, who is this? <laughs> if you read your Bible, David Koresh would not have fooled you and all the others. Because he's not going to be walking on this earth no more. He's going to be in the clouds, above the clouds, when we see him. And anybody who says, oh, I've seen Jesus. Jesus came in my room. Jesus talked to me. Jesus drove my car. Whatever it is. No, you're a liar. I've had people in the public ministry down here in Dayton. I had people, they're Jesus. I one man, he says, I'm Jesus. And he, he come up to me because I don't want you to tell people about me. I'm like, you need to get out of here. First of all, Jesus can't come walking up to me. Second of all, Jesus said, preach the gospel. Now get away from me. I've had I've one guy, and there's another guy who said he wanted to die. And I, I, I don't know if they're two different men or one man, but I had a man come up to me tell me he's Jesus. Honestly. He wasn't pulling him. Who is this? <clears throat> I bet you a lot of your pastors and preachers today, they would say, who is this? The Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the scribes say, who is this? They were the religious ones. You know what the Catholics are looking for? They're looking for Mary. And Jesus, who is this? Well, why would you say that? Don't you got the statues? Because those statues don't look like Jesus. I mean, you gotta you gotta break the statue in half, make it a middle one, and then put brown on it, not white. And the multitude said, "This is Jesus, the prophet, not the Messiah of Nazareth of Galilee." True, they have told us 
his birth certificate, where he was born. Because there's a lot of people in the Gospels, you'll read, oh, who is it? Where is he from? It's known. It's common knowledge who he was, what he is. And when they come up, they're just trying to get out of it. Now, that prophet of Nazareth, they're not saying Messiah. So, boy, now I'm trying to think. John. Gospel of John, chapter 4. Verse 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria. You probably, if you know the story at all. And he talks to her about the living water. She believes on him. He tells her, you know, you, the, the husband you have is not your husband right now. you got four husbands. That's the story. Okay? So she puts the she puts her water part down, and she goes running into the city, and a little bit more. I went, for, I went too far down. I'm looking for it. I to find the spot. I, it's, I just saw it. I went right by it. Oh, okay. Verse 25. John 4, 25. And the woman said to him, I know Messiah, Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us of all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak with thee am he. Don't tell me Jesus never said he was God. There he is. Okay. So. Look at verse 29. Come and see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? This Sumerian half-Jew woman said that's the Messiah. And all Jesus wanted was a drink of water. Now back to Matthew. Let me go back. Matthew 21. Who is he? He's a prophet. He's better than a prophet. Um, look at John 21. Let's see if I find this one. Might be 20. Might be 20. Oh, I didn't mark this one down. Just came to mind. On the road of the... One of them. I'll find it. Luke talks about what they it's not the conversation. Maybe it's Matthew. One of the pages. I believe when he when he talks to the two men on the road, he named this. I believe one of them said he was a he was a prophet. He didn't say he was Messiah. Let 
Yeah, I can't find where they, but that's, and, and, and the disciples are in up the room. They're in tears. They're in fear. Jesus has died. Woe is me. What do we do now? Didn't he tell him all through the ministry? Um, the Gentiles are going to take me. They're going to crucify me. They're going to, uh, I'm going to be buried. I'm in three days. I'm going to be resurrected. Yeah, he told them. But, oh, Lord, who's the greatest? Oh, Lord, can my son sit in the right hand? He, they were not listening. You need to open your ears and hear God. I'd be amazed. Sometimes I was in church and I'm done. You'd be hearing the message and you'll hear a couple of women talking in the back row. It's like, shut up. You know, they got to get that candy wrapper that, you know, even the people in hell can hear it being opened and up. Open your candy wrapper before you go to church. Put it in a little baggie so you don't interrupt the message. That was my five cents. Maybe ten cents with inflation. <laughs>